shall begin with a prayer handed down to us by Blessed Alberione. Jesus Divine Master, we adore you as the incarnate word sent by the Father to teach us the truth which alone can give life. You are the uncreated wisdom, you the light, you the only master, you have the words of eternal life. We thank you for having enkindled in us the light of faith and for having called us to the light of glory. To us the Paulines, our founder James Alberione gave a spirituality designed for following Jesus the Divine Master who is the way, the truth and the life in a tangible program of life. Many of us have been living this spirituality for 10 or 50 or more years. We have also among us some who have taken baby steps into this spirituality. Jesus, our master, is guiding each one of us, staying with us, following us, beginning from where we are. We follow this method in our prayer, meditation, in the holy hour, or visit to the blessed sacrament, and in our apostolic activity. Blessed Alberione's apostolic motto was, Give Jesus the way, the truth, and the life. Today, we shall gaze at Jesus' master, truth, through the eyes of our founder, through the intuition of our founder. We shall also look at the following of Jesus' master and announcing Jesus our master through the eyes of our founder. Whenever Blessed Alberione spoke about Jesus' master, he spoke of Jesus' way, truth and life. Yes, the integral Christ. Today, we shall try to give more emphasis on Jesus Master, the truth. Blessed Alberione said, the Institute wants to live Jesus Christ. Our main rule is, Christ lives in me. We have to live him as his disciple Saint Paul understood him. I live now not with my own life, but with the life of Christ. This is for every person in the Institute and for the entire community as a whole. To reproduce Christ in us, it is necessary to believe in his word, follow his examples and live his life. We pray in the invocations to the Divine Master. Jesus Master, sanctify my mind and increase my faith. Jesus Master, teaching in the church, attract all to your school. Jesus Master, deliver me from error, from vain thoughts and from eternal darkness. Jesus, the truth, grant that I may be the light of the world. In meeting with the truth, we meet the Father. Jesus said, If you know me, you will know my Father too. Jesus, the truth, demands that we recognize and listen to him. God our Father himself commands us to listen to him in his Son when he says, This is my beloved Son, listen to him. And Jesus himself says, All who are on the side of truth, listen to my voice. 
Jesus truth in the thought of blessed Alberione. Jesus is the sole master who teaches and educates. He reminds us that the truth is an exercise of the intelligence and the human ability, the capacity to learn from everything. Studiosita is an indication of his dynamic vision of the truth. It is our fidelity to God in human history that never repeats itself and brings with it ever new revelations concerning truth. Studiosita is a state of mind. It is the ability to learn from everyone and everything, people, events, experiences, in a way that is not superficial or haphazard. This truth, the fruit of the intellectual effort and our ability to learn from all things, avoids assuming positions of prestige and security. Instead, it encourages openness of mind and heart. Blessed Alberione says that the ability to learn from all things is a true necessity for a Pauline. The ability to learn from all things involves more than study. Let us listen to our Primo Maestro. No one can say I am not a student. We are all obliged to learn who is exempt from keeping her mind occupied, that mind which is her most important faculty. Otherwise, what do we do with this head and this intelligence? We are not mere animals following our minds. To obey is fine, but always use our minds in order to be able to obey with more wisdom. It is not enough to go ahead in any manner whatsoever. We must make the most of our intelligence. I believe it is the faculty for which we are most responsible. Learn from everything and from everyone. We see that in Blessed Alberione's thought, he did not give us the truth once and for all. Instead, that truth is to be sought after and studied more deeply. Our mind must be alert so as to listen to history and the science of the times. What is important is that we must have a solid foundation on Jesus the truth. It is Jesus truth who opens our minds to understand the scriptures. We also ought to acquire a mentality of dynamic searching because the truth is not something we attain once and for all as we said earlier. Truth must be understood and embraced with a new heart because the truth that is Christ cannot be imprisoned in any mental categories. Even though each of these categories can manifest a small part of the truth. Only in the light of Christ's truth can we determine what is true and what is not true. We also ought to learn the art of evaluation and comparison because the truth is like a precious stone. It has a thousand facets. We can only see a few of them. God alone sees them all. Christ's truth is the faithful one like the Father. We know that Jesus taught and he also practiced what he taught. 
he guided people to encounter the truth. When we encounter truth, our life is transformed. This we see in the life of our patron Saint Paul and our founder Blessed Alberioni. Their life was configured in Christ. In other words, the messenger became the message. To put it in the words of Mahatma Gandhi, my life is my message. Primo Maestro says, the great secret of the spiritual life is this, configuration with the divine master. Here is the source, the way and crown of life. Here is the trunk and root of our vitality and expansion. He continues, configuration with the divine master cannot be reduced simply to prayer or to study or to some hymns. It empowers the whole person and extends to the entire apostolic life because our apostolate is fruitful in the measure that it presents Jesus Christ, way, truth and life. Let us recall the story of the Samaritan woman in the Gospel of St. John. Jesus asked her for water, but at the end, Jesus becomes the giver of life-giving water to the woman. The woman is now being face to face with the truth, is able to hear Jesus' revelations about her own past life. The woman sees him as a prophet. A prophet, we know, is one who tells the truth. Jesus speaks to her about worshipping in truth and spirit. Truth here is not simply the opposite of intellectual falsehood or misunderstanding. Rather, it means living as a whole person in the light of God's presence as opposed to dwelling in the darkness of sin. What did she do then? She ran to the town and told the people, Come and see who has told me everything I ever did. The story ends, we know, in a harvest of Samaritan believers. The woman introduced Jesus to her fellow beings. They came and met Jesus and experienced him. The witness of a woman evoked an openness to the possibility of accepting the truth. Then, hearing Jesus' word, encountering him personally, and being touched by his grace, they were led to the living faith that Jesus is the truth, the Savior. In Jesus, St. Paul found the only treasure in life, and he could not remain passive, having the treasure, Christ within himself. He felt the urgency to share the love and freedom it had brought into his life. He expressed it this way. In fact, through the law, I am dead to the law, so that I can be alive to God. I have been crucified with Christ, and yet I am alive. Yet it is no longer I, but Christ living in me. The life that I am now living, subject to the human limitation of human nature, I am living in faith, faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. 
പോൾ അലൗഡ് ജീസസ് ടു ടേക്ക് ചാർജ് ഓഫ് ഹിസ് ലൈഫ് വാട്ട് വി സി ഇൻ പോൾ ഇസ് എ ടോട്ടൽ ട്രാൻസ്ഫർമേഷൻ ഇൻ ഹിസ് ലൈഫ് ഹിസ് മൈൻഡ് വിൽ ഹാർട്ട് എവറിത്തിങ് വാസ് ഫുള്ളി അവൈലബിൾ ടു ക്രൈസ്റ്റ് ദ വേ ദ ട്രൂത്ത് ആൻഡ് ലൈഫ് പോൾ ഷോസ് ദറ്റ് ദോസ് ഹു ട്രൂലി എൻകൗണ്ടർ ക്രൈസ്റ്റ് ആർ ഇംപെൽഡ് ടു ഷെയർ ദർ ജോയ് ദ ലീവ് ദർ കോസ്നസ് ആൻഡ് മൂവ് ഔട്ട് ഇൻ എ മിഷൻ ഓഫ് സെർവിംഗ് ക്രൈസ്റ്റ് ഇൻ അതേഴ്സ് ബ്ലസ്ഡ് അൽബേരിയോനെ എൻകൗണ്ടേഡ് ജീസസ് ഡ്യൂറിംഗ് ഹിസ് പ്രയർ ഇൻ ദ നൈറ്റ് that divided the two centuries he was certain that god was asking him to do something for the new century he was called to act he felt called to serve the people of god in a new way with a new means alberione aimed at a total transformation in christ in fact This was the secret of his spiritual life, his strength and his success in the apostolate. Alberione desired that a Pauline, an apostle of the media, allow Christ to be reproduced in himself or herself in order to lead people to Christ. Alberione was certain that that it was the duty of each messenger of each missionary to imitate Christ so as to share him with others in fact the idea of alberione's spiritual life is configuration with the divine master if one has to transmit the total christ in the mission the pauline himself has to conform to Jesus the master way truth and life according to alberione this configuration with the master empowers the whole person and extends itself to the entire apostolic life because our apostolate is fruitful in the measure that it represents Jesus Christ way truth and life Launching into anything new requires shrugging off our comforts and walking into the midst of people waiting for us. We can feel Alberione's torment when he says, Where and how and toward what is humanity moving? This humanity which is continually renewing itself on the face of the earth. This is the torment we ought to feel for our people especially at this moment. This mission requires that a messenger be transformed in Christ. He must become the mouth of Jesus and the voice of Jesus. Alberione said, hence the first concern of the Pauline family is to be holiness of life and the second is to be holiness of doctrine blessed james alberione felt in his heart the need to reach out to people of his time living in very difficult situations in the wake of the new century he said the first feature of the good pastor and of the pastorine is to know their sheep and then to make themselves known to them the former is proof of their concern the latter is a requirement if the sheep are not to become frightened and fearful of their presence one of his concerns was to preserve the faith of people as a result of the industrial revolution Many people from the countryside moved to cities in search of work. People who previously had had a strong 
supportive Catholic environment in their villages now found themselves shattered in their faith life. Alberione was conscious of the situations of these Christian communities and looked towards a new evangelization using the press together with traditional evangelization, preaching and catechism which involved, revolved around the parish. Alberione explained, many sheep stay outside the sheepfold and they do not come to the pastor because they do not know him, because perhaps they oppose him, and they oppose him because they do not know him. It is necessary to save all the souls. It is necessary that the pastor go to them. Today you go to these souls by means of the press. Alberione realized that to be free to care about others, apostles need to be less concerned with themselves. Selflessness frees the person who can then be more aware of the needs of others. He reminded, the less a person is concerned with the self, the more deeply and fully does she or he experience the needs of these unfortunates who like the divine gifts that Jesus Christ brought to humanity from heaven. The greater one's intimacy with the Lord, the livelier is this sensation. We have to adapt our apostolate to the situations in which we live, to improve pastoral care, to reach out to those who are in need of attention, looking towards a new life. This is very much required in areas where we find people in need of religious and moral upliftment along with economic upliftment. We understand Blessed James Alberione's far-sighted vision when he says, the Pauline family has an enormous opening onto the whole world and in its whole apostolate, studies, apostolate, piety, activities and production. Publications for all categories of people to make Jesus Christ known, to enlighten and to support every apostolate and good work to take all peoples to his heart. Jesus, the truth, has entrusted each of us with this command. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations. Like the apostles and disciples, we are commissioned with this mission to wake up the world with the light of the gospel. We are called to communicate the good news of Jesus in all corners of the world and in all human situations. We can understand Paul's eagerness to reach everyone with the message of the gospel when he says, there is great sorrow and unremitting agony in my heart. I could pray that I myself might be accursed and cut off from Christ, if this could benefit the brothers who are my own flesh and blood. Do we feel this agony today in our hearts? Perhaps we Paulines need to become aware of the existing situations in our society and extend our mission to the poor and marginalized through the media as well as through our direct contacts. Through our mission, we need to create a feeling of solidarity and communion of spirit in the society, at least where we live. Persons of caliber, persons transformed in Christ 
are able to create a spirit of solidarity in a society to be transformed in the values of Jesus the master way truth and life we have to sit at his feet in his presence in deep communion with him we will be able to recognize what he wants us to do for him today in silence we will be able to hear his gentle voice we will become creative in our apostolate from him we will get the courage to pursue new initiatives in our mission people can see a difference in us when we are close to god the disciples spent their lives day and night with jesus to absorb his mentality to learn to seek and to do god's will to follow his way of life when we have lived long enough with the master we will be clothed in the spirit of the master in the words of saint paul you are to be clothed in heartfelt compassion in generosity and humility gentleness and patience bear with one another forgive each other over all these clothes put on love the perfect bond confirmation with the master in fact is what qualifies our person it is the first motive for which the lord has called us and for which he still appeals to us calls us each day it is the essential reason for our living and working in the congregation growth in spirituality ought to enable us to move out of our comfort zones to the midst of people to get in touch with their pains and struggles jesus did that saint paul did it yet everyone knows it is a challenging task it requires a willingness from our part sometimes to dirty our shoes to give up a bit of our time but when in our own small ways we get involved such involvement can bring us much joy and contentment the pauline apostolate to offers many ways of reaching out to those in the periphery with the person of jesus a poem by rabindranath tagore expresses the sacredness of service i slept and dreamt that life was joy i awoke and saw that life was service i acted and behold service was joy go not to the temple to pray on bended knees first bend down to lift someone who is down trodden and strengthen the young ones do not crush them i wish to conclude with a quote from carl anderson jesus is already at the peripheries the question for us today is whether he will be there alone or whether his disciples will be there with him are we with him just a reminder blessed alberionis apostolic motto was give jesus the way the truth and the life